there and welcome to the Pets Aplenty channel. It's no surprise that people frequently mix the Irish Wolfhound with the Scottish Deerhound, two of the world's most giant canine breeds and both sight hounds with wiry coats. Although these two hound group members appear to be identical on the surface, significant characteristics distinguish each of them. Today on the channel, we've gathered all the helpful information about these breeds to help you make an informed decision when selecting a companion. So stay tuned as the Irish Wolfhound and the Scottish Deerhound battle for their differences and similarities in what promises to be a fiercely contested duel. Before we go further, we would love for you to become a member of the channel by clicking on the join button down below. You can also review the perks of Pets of Plenty membership after clicking the join button. Now, let's get into the video. Round 1 Dog Breed History Although much of the breed's history and ancestry is unclear, the Scottish Deerhound, sometimes known as the Royal Dog of Scotland, has been used for hunting deer since the early 16th century. They earned the name Deerhounds for their fantastic hunting skills against 400-pound wild red deer with piercing antlers. They were exclusively available to noblemen in their native Scotland, and no one lower than the rank of an earl could own one. Of course, this limited ownership nearly resulted in the extinction of the species multiple times. But in the late 18th century, the breed was saved and introduced to the United States. Although the popularity and population of the breed have progressively been grown, the Deerhound is still relatively uncommon today. On the other hand, the Irish Wolfhound is said to have existed far earlier than the Scottish Deerhound, as early as 391 AD, when seven Irish Wolfhounds were famously given to a Roman consul. Their popularity increased after that. They were initially employed to hunt the enormous six-foot-tall Irish elk, which is now extinct. However, when wolves began to overrun the Irish countryside in the 15th century, the focus of their hunts turned to the wolves. Their ability to quickly take down wolves earned them the name Irish Wolfhound. The wolfhounds were so effective at their job that they eliminated wolves and many other massive predators. Strangely, their success almost ended up in their own extinction. The situation was salvaged when fanciers intervened in the late 19th century, preserved the breed, and increased its population. Irish Wolfhounds are still an uncommon breed even to date. The Irish Wolfhound gets the game off to a beautiful start by scoring the opening point for longer commitment to people, being that it's an older breed and for frightening off enormous predators from 15th century Irish farms. So it's one point for the Irish and none for the Scottish. Round 2 – Appearance it can be challenging to identify an Irish Wolfhound from a Scottish Deerhound just by looking at them, especially if they're side by side. They both have long, wiry fur, although the Irish Wolfhound has more colors than the Scottish Deerhound. Their muzzles are pretty similar and have exceptionally sweet and gentle countenances. The legs of the Scottish Deerhound are somewhat longer than those of the Irish Wolfhound, and the chest of the Wolfhound is slightly wider than that of the Deerhound. The Deerhound has a long, tapering tail, almost touching the ground, whereas the wolfhound has a long, slightly curled tail. The deerhound has ears that are placed high and folded back, but the wolfhound has tiny, greyhound-like ears. However, these particulars can be all too minute to be seen. Given their remarkably close resemblance, we'd say the two breeds are pretty evenly matched in terms of looks, so they both get points for this round. We're now at two for the Irish and one for the Scottish. Round 3 – Temperament Aside from their personal history and physical qualities, the Wolfhound and Deerhound also have separate personalities. Well, sort of. The Irish Wolfhound is a brave, honorable, and serene dog. 
Despite their size, they're kind to children, and they thrive best with regular human company. These canines are kind, clever, and a soothing influence in their households. The Deerhound, on the other hand, is a kind, respectable, and courteous dog. Like the Irish Wolfhound, they may be gentle and loving, but they're also quick-witted and nimble. Their play style pays homage to the Deerhound's hunting roots. People perceive this play to be harsher than that of other breeds. Neither breed is hostile to strangers, but rather indifferent to them. They both make poor guard dogs and sometimes Sometimes not even watch dogs. Some gentle dogs of both breeds may remain lethargic when the doorbell rings, not bothering to raise an eyebrow. Moreover, they've been known to let intruders walk onto their property and into their homes without even barking to alarm their owners. However, what these massive dogs lack in security, they make up for with their adaptive, easygoing, loving temperament. So, on that note, they both deserve points for this round. Three points for the Irish and two for the Scottish. Round 4. Socialization Socialization is essential for any dog, but vital for giant breed puppies. An unruly 150-pound dog, even one with the best intentions, or one who is distrustful or scared, may be a nuisance at home and in the neighborhood. Purchasing an Irish Wolfhound or Scottish Deerhound puppy from a competent, respected breeder will guarantee that your hound is well-suited to training and socializing. Early socialization is critical for these animals. While their intense prey drive cannot be taught away, you can educate them to be comfortable and calm among other dogs of all shapes and sizes. While you can do your most challenging, these dogs are unlikely to ever be calm and collected around cats. None of these robust puppies should be off-leash in public, so they must walk appropriately on the lead. To guarantee that your regular walks with your dog are peaceful and pleasurable for both of you, it is crucial to leash train them from an early age. One point for each guy brings us to four for the Irish and three for the Scottish. Round 5. Grooming the Irish Wolfhound has a double coat, but the Scottish Deerhound doesn't. However, they require almost equivalent amounts of grooming despite having different coats. In terms of shedding, the Scottish Deerhound sheds seasonally, but the Irish Wolfhound sheds all year, albeit not excessively. Both breeds don't shed a lot, so you only need to brush their long, wiry hair once or twice a week to keep it healthy and free of knots. Even though they don't blow their coat when they shed, you can still find wiry wiry hairs on your couch and clothes. Because both breeds are runners, you'll need to keep up with nail trimming to keep the nails from becoming overgrown and uncomfortable. Both breeds are excellent in being low maintenance in terms of grooming. They get a point each. It's five to four, guys. The wolfhound appears somewhat ahead, but it's too soon to call it. We'll have to wait and see what develops next. Round 6. Exercise because of their couch potato tendencies, you may be persuaded to believe that these canines do not require exercise. But quite on the contrary, that's precisely what is needed to cultivate their peaceful, passive attitude in the first place. Deerhounds and wolfhounds were bred as hunting dogs and needed safe, secure locations to run. A brief leashed stroll won't cut it for these massive creatures. These dogs won't benefit physically or emotionally from being confined to a all day. However, neither breed can be made to exercise against their will, especially when they're young. To thrive, they require the correct type of atmosphere, which is why having a big, walled-in yard is essential. Apartment life is inappropriate for these pets. Scottish Deerhounds could need a little more activity and exercise than the Irish Wolfhounds. If left unattended, they may become more destructive. However, both species require much time spent with their humans. Once more, the Irish Wolfhound scores higher on our tally by earning a point for being more chill and less destructive. It's six points for our Irish canine and four for our Scottish. Round 7. Training 
Although Scottish Deerhounds get along well with other dogs, they are aggressive chasers of any moving object, even cats and small dogs. Irish Wolfhounds will rather hunt for a rabbit than pay attention to and learn from their master. They're both moderately obstinate and independent, albeit loving and sensitive dogs. They're open to responding to pleasant training that includes continuous direction, vocal praise, and food incentives, even if they do it slowly and casually, as if they're humoring you. It's doubtful that these dogs are for you if you're looking for a puppy from any of the sighthound breeds that'll be completely obedient. If you want them to be entirely disciplined, enroll them in an obedience course with an expert. And if you wish to crate train, opt for crates suited for large breeds. So yeah, they both get the point for this round. Seven for the Irish and five points for the Scottish Deerhound. Round A, Diet and Nutrition. If you're contemplating adopting one of these pooches, this is something essential to think about. They consume far more food than the typical dog. However, the Deerhound consumes less. The average daily food intake for a Scottish Deerhound is around 3.5 cups, whereas that of an Irish Wolfhound is about 4.5 cups. So, Deerhound wins this round because he saves us a few pennies on food. We're gradually getting there, guys. It's 7 points for the Irish and 6 for the Scottish. Round 9. Health as giant breed dogs, both Scottish Deerhounds and Irish Wolfhounds face health issues that big dogs face. Hip and elbow dysplasia, musculoskeletal disease, or gastrointestinal problems. This is probably due to the rapid growth rates these breeds require to reach their enormous size potential. Irish Wolves were relatively inbred due to four significant genetic bottlenecks. Unfortunately, inbreeding might also account for the Irish Wolfhound's 6-10 to 10 year lifespan on average. This breed is prone to dilated cardiomyopathy, osteosarcoma, stomach dilation, vulvalvus, and osteochondrosis. Osteosarcoma, portosystemic shunts, stomach difficulties, and cardiac problems are among the health challenges that the deerhound faces. They can also suffer from deerhound neck, which is brought on by cervical discomfort. The Irish deerhound has a life expectancy of 8 to 11 years. The figures are in, and it appears the deerhound gains another point on the score sheet for better health and longevity. Final tally, drum roll please, the Irish Wolfhound has 7 points and so does the Scottish Deerhound. Folks, it appears that we're tied. In conclusion, every human has a choice. It's vital to consider your personal needs and environment during adoption. Both dog breeds can work excellently as a pet or companions. This is simply our evaluation. Remember, yours may be different. In addition, before adopting a dog, do well to seek professional advice from the breeder and your veterinarian. What are your thoughts on today's contest? Let us know in the comments section. Consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button to get early access to our upcoming videos plus other membership perks. Also, check out our playlist and click on the video links that pop up at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.